From the silver screen to the runway, red lipstick has always been a timeless classic. In this video, I'm going to show you the history of red lipstick and how it's evolved over the years. Hello lovelies, my name is Laura and in this video I'm going to take you on a journey through time. We're going to explore the history of red lipstick and see how it's evolved over the years from Queen Elizabeth I to Marilyn Monroe. So sit back, relax, and get ready for a makeup lesson like no other. Thank you, Gin Rummy Stars, for sponsoring this post. You often see Gin Rummy appear in old movies and TV shows, and that's because in the 1940s and 1950s, the game was a national craze and everyone was playing it. As you may know, I love all things vintage, and I love the idea of playing a vintage game that was popular in the 1940s and 1950s. Gin Rummy Stars is the best free online gin Rummy game. With Gin Rummy Stars, you can play online rummy with friends or against rummy players from all around the world. Play Gin Rummy Stars to enjoy Gin Rummy plus chat with other Gin Rummy players during the game for a complete social gaming experience. Click the link in the description box below and receive exclusive 1,000 free coins from me and add a comment of your win with the highest point gap and your player ID to the comments. The winner will win an extra 1,000 coins. Gin Rummy Stars is the most popular card game you can play online with friends for free. In this online card game of Rummy, you can play and enjoy the best online gaming experience with a free Rummy game of cards. I personally love to play Gin Rummy Stars at night before I go to bed as a way to wind down. I find that it really helps to keep my mind sharp and I kind of like going through the cards. I feel like it's really relaxing, especially when they get shuffled. You should definitely download it if you want a fun vintage game to play while you're on the go or just as a way to relax in the evenings and make sure you click the link in the description box below and receive exclusive 1000 free coins from me so thank you gin rummy stars for sponsoring this post there is something about red lipstick that has captivated women throughout history whether it is the boldness of the color or the confidence it seems to instill, red lipstick has been worn by some of the most famous and iconic women in history. Cleopatra is said to have used a red tint made from crushed insects, and Queen Elizabeth I popularized the use of lead-based ingredients to create a vivid red hue. In the early 20th century, film stars like Joan Crawford and Greta Garbo helped to make red lipstick even more popular, and it has been associated with femininity and glamour ever since. Today, red lipstick remains as popular as ever, and its timeless appeal shows no signs of slowing down. There is a shade of red for every woman, Audrey Hepburn says. The famous Audrey Hepburn of the 20th century said these words. You might interpret this literally, of course. After all, red lipstick is available in a range of shades, from the darkest crimsons to the palest cherries, which are sure to complement every woman's skin tone. The quote, however, takes on a completely new meaning when you consider the intricate history of red lipstick at the time. One of the most essential products in a woman's beauty kit is a red lipstick. A crimson pout is one of the most potent beauty icons in use today. But have you ever thought about where the recognizable beauty item originated? Red lipstick has a rich, turbulent history that has been significant for ages. Many historians believe that the first people to use lipstick were the ancient Sumerians in southern Mesopotamia around 3500 BC. The lips were tinted with powder made from crushed red pebbles. Others want to attribute the invention of lipstick to the elites of ancient Egypt, where Cleopatra was rumored to have worn lip paint made by combining crushed insects with an intense paste of red waxes. Regardless of its exact origin, wearing red lipstick has always been a significant social signal with a wide range of connotations. 
The visual statement could have been a flirty signal of seduction, a claim of social rank, a display of wealth, or an expression of confidence, depending on the era and the century. In 1912, tens of thousands of suffragists marched past Elizabeth Arden's New York Salon. The proprietor of the cosmetics company who had only started up her company two years prior was a supporter of women's rights. And she joined the cause by giving tubes of vivid red lipstick to the marching woman. Red lipstick was a favorite of suffrage pioneers Charlotte Perkins Gilman and Elizabeth Caddy Stanton because of its shocking effect on men. Protesters wore it in a large quantities as a symbol of their independence and defiance. According to Rachel Felder, author of Red Lipstick, an Ode to a Beauty Icon, there could not be a more ideal emblem of suffered gets than red lipstick because it's not just forceful, it's female. Suffragettes were about more than just physical strength in women. From its early use by the elites in ancient Egypt and by prostitutes in ancient Greece to its standing in early Hollywood as a symbol of glamour, red lipstick has signaled a variety of things throughout the ages. This color on lips, which comes in a variety of shades, has been a potent cultural weapon with a meaning that dates back thousands of years. According to Felder, wearing red lipstick is an effective approach to track society trends and cultural history. Before lipstick became widely used in the 20th century, red lips were frequently connected to morally questionable women who were rude, immoral in their sexual behavior, or even hysterical. Red lips were considered a sign of mixing with the devil during the Middle Ages. According to Felder, the makeup was connected with the strange, scary femininity. Queen Elizabeth I is well known for her love of red lipsticks, but what many don't know is that this vibrant shade may have played a role in her untimely death. Queen Elizabeth's red lipstick was made with a poisonous ingredient called vermilion. This substance contains mercury, which can be lethal in large doses. Queen Elizabeth frequently applied the lipstick to her lips, exposing herself to harmful vapors. In addition, she often shared the lipstick with her ladies-in-waiting, putting them at risk as well. Mercury poison can cause a range of symptoms, including fatigue, paralysis, and even death. Queen Elizabeth's doctors were unaware of the dangers of mercury poisoning, and as a result, they were unable to save her from its deadly effects. Queen Elizabeth's red lipstick may have been the cause of her death, but it also became a symbol of her bold and regal persona. To this day, Queen Elizabeth is remembered as one of the most powerful and iconic monarchs in history. Red lipstick re-emerged as the trend during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I with her distinctive stark white complexion and brooding red pout. The queen defied the church and revived the painted face craze. During Elizabeth's reign, amassing expensive goods started to be seen as a sign of social rank. The bourgeoisie was influenced by this to accumulate works of literature, music, art, and entertainment. Cosmetics have become more popular as a result of this renewed love for the aesthetic. In most parts of England, lipstick has reclaimed its place in people's hearts. It even served as a type of currency at one point since it was so widely used. Many admired the appearance since it was once more used to gauge social standing and riches. Due to the more expensive ingredients needed to manufacture them, the more bright red lipstick symbolized wealth, whereas the lower classes were more likely to wear dull orca colored lipstick. Red lipstick was reportedly the queen's trademark color, even Queen Elizabeth is thought to have invented the lip pencil, most likely with the help of one of her many maids. Venetian Ceruse, a white face paint made of white lead and vinegar, was also worn by the queen. She applied several coats of paint to her face to create the look of a renowned porcelain doll. Sadly, at the time, people were not aware of the risks posed by the dangerous components utilized to make these cherished everyday items. High concentrations of poison in the body were caused by hazardous chemicals like lead and mercury. 
Women frequently left on makeup till it disappeared back then because cosmetics were less widely available, which allowed the skin to absorb these harmful elements. Over time, a lot of women were poisoning themselves without even realizing it. This caused hysteria, darkened skin, tooth rot, hair loss, and even death. So they just didn't wash their face. They just kept reapplying the makeup over and over again. In her final years, Queen Elizabeth battled smallpox and the side effects of fatal cosmetics. Despite being unwell, the queen proceeded to paint her face every day. She would apply layers of scarlet lipstick and hide smallpox scars with Venetian ceruse because she felt it had a healing charm. Her favorite lippy, though, performed the exact opposite. The queen eventually met her demise as a result of her beauty routine. She allegedly had an inch thick covering of lipstick when she was discovered dead. Then, as the American suffrage movement embraced red lips, its international equivalents did as well, according to Felder's book. British and American activists frequently shared ideas from planning marches to organizing hunger strikes to more overtly militant tactics as women's rights movements spread throughout Europe, New Zealand, and Australia. And their makeup reflected this solidarity. Emmeline Pankhurst, the head of the British suffragette movement, adopted the crimson lip as a show of solidarity with her American counterparts, which encouraged other activists to follow suit. Felder points out that even suffragettes were responsible for popularizing the red lip look at the time. There was already a trend toward women generally adopting more streamlined silhouettes and getting rid of constructive corsets in favor of brassieres. The ecstatic flappers of the Roaring Twenties adopted the suffragettes' crimson lipstick look, and Welder noted that suffragettes may not have been primarily responsible for popularizing painted lips. They did serve as an example of what Felder called the modern woman in both Europe and America. Red Lips performed their audacious second act of rebellion during a World War II. According to Felder, Adolf Hitler famously detested crimson lipstick. Wearing it became a symbol of patriotism and a protest against fascism among allied nations. Women in the UK dyed their lips with beet juice when taxes made lipstick unaffordable. They put on red lips to enter the workforce when men left for war and women occupied professional responsibilities at home. According to Felder, it demonstrated their tenacity in the face of strife and provided a feeling of normalcy during trying times. Women were able to maintain their pre-war sense of self-identity because of this. The cultural figurehead used to empower and attract American woman manufacturer workers Rosie the Riveter was depicted by J. Howard Miller with cherry red lips. Red lipstick became a requirement for women enlisting in the U.S. Army in 1941 and continued to be so throughout the war. Elizabeth Arden and Helena Rubinstein, among other beauty companies, released Victory Red and Regimental Red in response to the wartime fad. However, the American government ordered Arden to develop a standard lip and nail color for serving women. Her Montezuma Red complemented and emphasized the red piping on their uniforms. Red lipstick has been a mainstay of beauty since high school, and Felder noted that wearing it was so tied to a sense of feminine self-esteem, in particular, resilient and robust female self-esteem. After the war, confident looks were given to a touch of glitz by legendary Hollywood actresses like Elizabeth Taylor. Women started experimenting more with makeup and clothing after the suffragette movement, which ultimately contributed to the Hollywood era's sparkle and glamour from 1920 to 1930. Through their on-screen roles, actresses like Gloria Swanson, Mary Pickford, Clara Bow, Greta Garbo, and even the animated character Betty Boop helped to further popularize the style. The popular appearance at the time was pouted lips. Many actresses used a lip pencil and a lip cream to shape their lips to obtain the scarlet pout, giving rise to the well-known Cupid's bow lip shape. 
Betty Boop was one of the first cartoon characters to popularize red lipstick. Betty Boop debuted in 1930, and her iconic look included flirty dresses, big eyes, and ruby red lips. Betty Boop's lips were so red that they looked almost like they were bleeding. This bold choice of makeup was new and exciting for cartoon characters in the 1930s, and Betty Boop quickly became one of the most popular cartoon characters of her time. Her distinctive look has influenced many cartoon characters that have come after her, and she remains an icon of the 1930s fashion. Betty Boop's impact on fashion is still evident today, nearly a century after she first appeared on the silver screen. As a spooky canine-like creature created by Fleischer Studios in 1930, Betty was intended to be the love interest for Bimbo, an animated dog with his own talk cartoon series. In 1932, for the jazzy Annie Riggs, she swapped the floppy ears for hoop earrings and went on to star in over a hundred animated shorts. Then there's the issue of cultural appropriation. Helen Kane, a well-known white singer best known for her 1938 blockbuster hit, I Want to Be Loved by You, was the inspiration for Betty's distinctive flapper appearance and squeaky voice. The only drawback? Helen Kane had stolen a baby Esther, an African American scat singer, Boop Oop A Doop, Oop Op Doopsy. Betty Boop displayed her peculiar brand of childlike sexuality between 1932 and 1934 while wearing high heels and a garter belt. Pen and ink her theme tune. There's a little monarch of the animated screen, wait till you get a view of sweet Betty. She declared bluntly when asked why she was there. The jazz age Jezebel's short films included mature themes and were incompromisably racist and sexist by today's standards. She was pursued by creatures that were always trying to look under her skirt. Circus performer Betty had to defend herself against a perverted ringleader sexual attack in Boo-Op Doo-Op. But she prevailed. He was unable to remove my boop op dupe, she claims. Oh no, right? Not to mention she enjoyed going out to parties. Do you recall the day she and Cuckoo got lit after getting into a tank of laughing gas? American censors had seen enough sly immorality on screen by 1934. When the Hollywood Production Code and the National Legion of Decency imposed morality standards on the film industry, Betty lost her sassy opening, changed to modest shirts and long skirts, and stopped using innuendos. Bimbo the dog and Betty Boop got a little too close. They do appear to kiss frequently. Naturally, the popularity of Bimbo quickly overshadowed hers as her new role bore the heck out of the audience. However, Betty Boop would not allow the patriarchy to slam her and silence her. Betty Boop made a cameo appearance in the 1988 film Who Framed Roger Rabbit while wearing her original strapless dress and heels in her licensed image, which started appearing on everything from lunchboxes to Lancome mascara. And a fun fact is the actress who portrayed Betty in the 1930s, Mae Questel, also provided the voice for that character. Her impact can still be felt today. Without a doubt, a Betty Boop created the traditional red carpet beauty look with long black lashes and vivid red lips. Her 1920s speakeasy aesthetic inspired the 1940s old Hollywood style, which in turn inspired a 1950s red lips and fingertip flicks, the 1980s glamour resurgence, and the new millennium's Bambi lashes, felt tip liquid liner, and yes, brilliant red lipsticks. Marilyn Monroe is a timeless symbol of beauty, glamour, and sex appeal. In the 1950s, she popularized red lipstick, making it an iconic beauty essential. Monroe was known for her signature Marilyn Monroe red lipstick look, which consisted of a bold red lip, winged eyeliner, and false lashes. This was both sultry and sophisticated, and it helped to cement Monroe's status as a Hollywood icon. Today, red lipstick is still associated with glamour and femininity, thanks in part to Marilyn Monroe. Whenever you wear red lipstick, 
you are channeling the Hollywood glamour of Marilyn Monroe. Even if every Hollywood actress, magazine pinup, and school nurse had red lips by 1953, this scene from Gentlemen Prefer Blondes with red lipsticks will live in the memory of generations of makeup artists. In a strapless pink dress, gloves, and the song Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, Marilyn Monroe performs. This scenario was also reenacted for Madonna's Material Girl in 1985. The key to Marilyn Monroe's bombshell persona was her scarlet mouth, her pursed big lips, and the gentle, sulky voice that came from between them exuded sex appeal and a captivating ultra-feminine attractiveness. Red lipstick was the cosmetic equivalent of the slinky, low-cut skirts and high heels that were her signature looks along with her golden blonde hair. Red lipstick, however, did more than just that. It helped her portray many of the roles better. Red lipstick was the right accessory to emphasize her character's femininity and seductiveness in parts like Cherie in Bus Stop and Lori Lai Lee in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Marilyn's makeup artist, Alan Whitney Snyder, carefully applied several shades of red to her lips at once, using a darker version towards the corners and a softer version towards the center to create a strongly accentuated pout. However, the actress's seductive attitude wasn't simply reserved for her film performances. When she was on duty, Max Factor's Ruby Red was a fixture of her makeup routine. The Marilyn Monroe Lipstick Collection, which featured four wearable shades of red, was launched in 2016. Even though the brand is no longer sold in America, her favorite Ruby Red is still available to purchase online, and I have that one too. It's such a nice classic. And here are some other iconic red lipstick moments in history. The original Lady in Red is Rita Hayworth. Rita Hayworth was essentially a spokesperson for the color thanks to her red hair styled in classic Hollywood waves, creamy red lips, and complimentary red nails. Throughout the 1940s, the bombshell frequently appeared in advertisements for True Color, the first smear-proof lipstick, as a Max Factor model. And next we have the I Love Lucy star, Lucille Ball. No one ever questioned Lucy's bright candy red lips, despite the fact that she may have needed to explain herself. All of her publicity and behind-the-scenes photos were taken with her dazzling carrot-colored hair and matching a ruby lip, despite the fact that an adored sitcom was shot in black and white. And next we have Elizabeth Taylor. The well-known Hollywood actor said, pour yourself a drink, put on some lipstick, and pull yourself together. And she did. Taylor always looked stunning, sporting a full face of gorgeous makeup and a splash of pink red lipstick. While Taylor turned to a mixture of lipstick shades, Elizabeth Arden's Ceramide Ultra Lipstick in the shade Rouge is a way to stay connected to the Hollywood beauty, and that was one of her favorite red lipstick shades. She was a huge fan of Elizabeth Arden. And next we have the lovely Grace Kelly. Grace Kelly had a great deal of power as both an award-winning actress and the Princess of Monaco. She became a style icon because of her ability to combine French and American styles. Her makeup, in contrast, was straightforward, subtle, and perhaps even regardless as a no-makeup look in modern times. However, people took notice of her naturally arched brows, sparse eyeliner, which highlighted her eyes, her choice of a darker hued red lipstick from Dior's Rouge stood out against this plain background. Grace Kelly's use of crimson and her sense of style were both remarkable. Her attire frequently veered away from red lipstick cliches and assumed an image of innocence and elegance since it was delicate and formal. Think collared blouses, button-up cardigans, and pearls. Rouge Dior, a classic red with a modern formula, Dior's 999 silky finish, was the Dior lipstick that Grace Kelly used, and you could still buy this one today, and I love it. It's such an old Hollywood classic and an icon. I just wish they had the vintage tube. And next we have Audrey Hepburn. 
When recalling a vintage movie icon like Audrey Hepburn, the image of her in Breakfast at Tiffany's in a chic floor-length black dress crowned with a tiara immediately comes to mind. Despite the sparkle and splendor of the notorious movie Funny Face, another legendary Hepburn picture can be regarded as equally or even more stylish. Hepburn shines on television in exquisite attire like a couture Givenchy wedding dress when she co-stars with Fred Astaire. It is easy to understand why Audrey Hepburn was regarded as one of the most iconic and important fashion icons to come from the 1950s and 1960s after only one viewing of the film. In addition to the very stunning costumes in the film, the makeup was also outstanding in Funny Face. And if you want to recreate Audrey Hepburn's beauty look in a funny face. The lipstick that she wore is one that is still available today and surprisingly enough you can get it at the, your local drugstore. And Audrey Hepburn was a huge fan of Revlon. She posed for many of their ads in the 80s and the lipstick that she wore in a funny face is a Revlon super illustrious lipstick called Fire and Ice which is a very popular shade from the 1950s. And next we have blondie Debbie Harry with the mods of the 1960s and the hippies of the 1970s who favored neutral or pastel colored lips, red lipstick lost its appeal. Red's too polished reputation needed a boost of rebellion, which Debbie Harry provided by sporting the color while sporting sooty eyes, razor sharp cheekbone contours, and a furious look. And this was popular in the 1980s. Moving into the 1990s now, we have Madonna. Madonna. On her 1990 Blonde Ambition Tour, Madonna sought a sassy shade to go with her seductive look. MAC, a young makeup company, stepped in to save the day by giving the actors their well-known Russian red matte lipstick. The shade continued to sell well and is still one of the most popular red lipsticks today. And next we have Carolyn Bassett Kennedy. It was no surprise that the chic woman who wed New York's most famous bachelor would become a national fixation since John F. Kennedy Jr. was the greatest cat of the 1990s. Prior to the couple's terrible plane crash in 1999, the former PR rep for Calvin Klein avoided the spotlight. She never gave a single interview, but that didn't stop the paparazzi from shooting pictures in Tribeca of her stylish, minimalistic ensembles and seeming effortless red lipstick. And next we have Anna Nicole Smith. Anna Nicole Smith was the Marilyn Monroe of a new millennium. All blonde hair and curves, wide eyes, and a brilliant red pout. The former stripper and well-known Playboy model rose to legitimate stardom as a guest model, but she's better known for her wild weight swings, erratic antics, and the Anna Nicole Smith show, and what some have dubbed a gold-digging marriage to an 89-year-old billionaire, J. Howard Marshall II. Unfortunately, like her idol, Anna Nicole Smith, passed away from a fatal prescription drug overdose. And next we have Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman, one of my favorite movies in 1990. When you swipe a fierce pout, you instantly turn into a new woman, much like Julia Roberts did in her pivotal scene in Pretty Woman. But who wouldn't feel like a celebrity if they were wearing a bright head-to-toe look in a beautiful red dress with a magnificent diamond necklace that Richard Gere had given them to them. And I love this classic look. And then we have another 1990s beauty queen, Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford is already well known for being unforgettable, but this appearance at the Revlon's Unforgettable Woman of the 1990s Award is one of her most memorable beauty moments of the 90s. And then we have Uma Thurman, in Pulp Fiction from 1994, Uma Thurman pulls off this vampy crimson lip in Quentin Tarantino's cult film Pulp Fiction. Even an Urban Decay created a limited edition makeup line in 2014 to honor Uma Thurman's seductive red smile. If you weren't there, no worries, you can still purchase Mrs. Wallace Vice lipstick today. And I think I ended up purchasing that whole collection on eBay. I did a video about it. Since the early days of film, red lip have been associated with glamour and sophistication. From Rita Hayworth to Audrey Hepburn, 
many of Hollywood's most iconic stars have made red lipstick their signature look. Today, red lips are still seen as a symbol of elegance and refinement. Wearing red lipstick is a way to make a bold statement and stand out from the crowd. It shows that you are confident and comfortable in your own skin. Red lipsticks is the perfect finishing touch to any outfit, whether you're dressing up for a special occasion or just trying to add a little extra oomph to your everyday look. There's no doubt about it, red lipstick is still a timeless classic. From the boldly vibrant lips of Queen Elizabeth I to the sultry pouts of Marilyn Monroe, red lipstick has been a timeless symbol of femininity and power. Worn by leading ladies throughout history, red lipstick is the ultimate weapon in a woman's arsenal. It has the ability to transform a look from ordinary to extraordinary, and it commands attention like no other color. Whether you're looking to make a statement or simply accentuate your features, red lipstick is always a perfect choice. So go ahead and give into temptation. After all, history is waiting to be made. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon, and don't forget to check out some of my other beauty videos. All right, bye guys.